pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Councilmember Irby? Here. Councilmember Page? Here. Councilmember Wassinger? Here. Councilmember Gray? Here. Councilmember Dolan? Here. Councilmember Trachis? Present. Councilmember Harder? Here. Mr. Chair, we have a quorum. I move for approval of the journal of the meeting of October 2nd, 2018. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Journal's approved. We have no bid openings tonight, so we'll move to communications. Mr. Chair, we have no tax compromises, zoning matters, or road and bridge matters this evening, so I'll move to other communications. Under other communications, item number one, fifth district. Um, I believe receive and file, please. So ordered. Item number two. Receive and file, same motion for item number three, and that'll be the order. Item number four. You see, following county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. Uh, same motion for number five, and that will be the order. Item number six, all districts. Receive and file. Same motion for item number seven. Item number eight, all districts. Uh, receive and file. County council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation, and that will be the order. Item number nine, fourth district. Receive, file, and the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number 10, 7th District. <coughs> Receive file and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Please read the add-ons. On the add-ons, under other communications, item number 1. Um, Receive file and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. Same motion for item number 2 and that will be the order. Item number 3, 1st District. Receive, file, and the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. Thanks. So ordered. Report the county executive. Nothing further proceeding. Report of special committees. Please hold on to the business. So ordered. Um, public forum. We have nine speakers this evening, Mr. Chair. Thank you. When your name is called, please come up to the podium and adjust the microphone so we can uh, catch your remarks and give us your name and address for the record. <coughs> please try to keep your comments to three minutes. Our first speaker this evening is Isora Liggins. Good evening. My name is Isora Liggins, 5320 Bermuda Road. I guess I'll open up by saying I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sure that's something that's been echoed out here for a while. To Mr. Stinger, the last time I saw you, I gave you an email. You told me that you would respond to that email. And to, to date, I have not heard from your office or a response. So, could you tell me just when I could expect to hear something from your office? I'm not certain exactly what you're talking about, but I will look into what you're talking about and see what, you know, what the status of that is. I'm not really sure as I sit here. You don't remember me giving you the email here in the office, I mean here at the county council a few weeks ago, you said you would respond. It may have been a few weeks ago, but I need to check and see if somebody responded or they didn't or exactly what the status that is. Okay, so I really hope by next Tuesday I can hear from somebody. I would appreciate that. I'd be happy to do that. Okay. And um, to this council, I gave you guys a chart last week. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, it showed you what fraud upon the court looks like in my life. And I can't understand how anybody can expect a person to come before your courts and um, be faced with uh, Judge Mary B. Schroeder and her husband, Attorney Stanley Schroeder, and another family member, Attorney Sherry Schroeder, 
and expect to get any form of justice when they are siding directly with the Boeing Corporation and District 837 in Hazelwood. So I think it, it's really uh, kind of ridiculous to think that we could come before the courts or before this council or before our legislators and get anything done when nobody's actually following the rules. So again, I'm asking that you guys would um, make a recommendation to the prosecuting attorney's office so I can get in and speak to someone or to handle my situation. And I can't do it without you guys putting some um, paperwork or a letter or something I'm just asking for due process, and I think that's fair. I don't think that any one of y'all would not expect due process. And um, it was interesting watching YouTube, and I saw um, the meeting last week, and that was very interesting where you were talking about labor and the exchange between Councilman Dolan, I think, and uh, Councilwoman Irby. And I, I know what it's like to be uh, treated poorly in your union and with your labor representatives because I am a 37 member of District 837. I have been affiliated with that union for the last 37 years, and they have not even stuck their head up to help me. And I think that's in North County. So we suffer in this county. We suffer in this county from many forms of racism and labor and police and you name it. It's, our, it's, it's what we have to live with. But you guys can change all that. You can just do the right thing. That's all we're asking you to do. And this is just for, uh, I would like to share this with Councilwoman Irving and Councilman. This is just for them to see what labor is like and what it really looks like to be discriminated against. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Next speaker is Danny Eisenreich. <clears throat> Greetings. Uh, we are here today representing a small group of mechanics from Public Works. We're assigned to St. Louis County Justice Center, and we are requesting the honorable council members and Mr. Stinger consider our assignment, working conditions, and involvement in daily operations of this facility to grant those employees a pay increase. We are not asking for all public work staff to get a raise, but the mechanics assigned to the Justice Center should. We are the only group in facilities management that has to work evenings, <clears throat> weekends, and holidays. During these work hours, we are not only taking care of the jail, but all other county buildings throughout the county. <coughs> we deal not just with the public, but with the secretary, judges, um, justice services staff, nurses, uh, prosecuting attorney, public defenders, police officers, and of course inmates on a daily basis. We are losing our experienced staff at an alarming rate because, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, no raises and lure of higher paying jobs on the outside. The people that are getting hired in are starting out at higher salary than some people that have been here for years. Some of our lower paid mechanics are required to train new hirees, even though they're making less money. With losing experienced mechanics at the jail, uh, it will become more deteriorated and more dangerous place to work for everybody. There's nothing more important than the operations and security of such a building. I'm sure any Justice Service Administrator will agree, without our dedicated maintenance staff, our problems in the kitchen, laundry, plumbing, electric, heating and cooling, and also <coughs> security will continue to increase. We will no longer have the staff to work in, in a correctional facility that is as complex as the Justice Center. The Justice Center has over a thousand cells that house inmates with <coughs> that house inmates with toilets that clog, sprinkler heads that break, and jail 
cell locks that malfunction along with the hundreds of slider doors. It takes a couple of years to get new employee trained and they still have trouble with the complex security network. We only have a handful of experienced staff left. That is why we are asking public work staff assigned to the Justice Center to get a raise. So we can try to keep dedicated and knowledgeable mechanics on duty to maintain the security of the facility. This is the only this is one of the last buildings I would think that the operation security would want to be minimized or to deteriorate or be in a dangerous condition for all employees. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Zachy Baruti. <laughs> Good evening, uh, council people. Um, my name is Zaki Barudi. I'm representing the Universal African People's Organization. Uh, before I uh, give my remarks, uh, I just wanted to echo uh, what uh, one of the previous speakers had uh, made a statement on a historic note. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And uh, that came from a powerful human rights activist, Fannie Lou Hamer. And I do that because I'm here of course, um, uh, as in past meetings, to call for a civilian oversight board and uh, want to be a constant reminder, I'm taking a positive attitude. I'm taking a positive attitude because each of you know the kind of racial situation that has been existing here in this county, here in this state, and across America. And I'm sure each of you want to make a difference. So in making a difference, I challenge you to look at the model that we were able to implement in the city of St. Louis in terms of a civilian oversight board that now has subpoena power. And I say that in light of the fact that, as you all know from uh, news accounts, of which also I've spoken to you about, that is a doggone shame that uh, a St. Louis County police squad car chased another car in violation of the St. Louis County pursuit policy out of which two gentlemen, a 49-year-old and a 59-year-old, were killed. And the car involved in terms of the chase, turning this light off, keeping on going, didn't even have the decency to stop and check on the victims of the car crash. And after we had had a press conference denouncing that based on witnesses that we were able to find in that area in Berkeley, that uh, a spokesperson for St. Louis County denied it was a chase, but had to change that when we found actual video that showed the chase. So I call upon you on the positive, and anybody else that's out here, that that's have some justice. And with that, it's quite obvious that the police cannot investigate themselves. We need an independent panel of civilians that provide oversight and help form policy as relates to policing. Too many times we've been victims of uh, police encounters. And so to that end, as Fannie Lou Hamer has said, as I started at the top of the hour, we are sick and tired of being sick and tired. So I challenge you, as I've been challenged you, do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Clara, and the last name starts with a C. Cheeks is my name, Clara Cheeks. And I decided that I'm not going to speak tonight. I'm going to wait until next two. Thank you. And the next speaker is William Neal. Yes, I'm William Neal. And I'm going to do the same. Next And the next speaker is Arlene Hayes. Hi. Good evening, my name is Orlene Hayes. I stay at 7007 Idlewild Avenue. I am here to address Miss Hazel Irby. Um, 
on behalf of the residents uh, of Better Neighborhoods, I am requesting an application to be sent to Hillsdale on behalf of the St. Louis County owned properties. I was told that there is no contract from Kathleen Jacob. There is no contract presently with Hillsdale concerning the St. Louis County owned properties. In the process of going to get my inspection, I was just overwhelmed with the high debris, the vacant properties that was open, not boarded. And I was told when I went to the mayor office that the majority of the properties was owned by St. Louis County. In the process of trying to get a list drawn up, the, the mayor stated that they had cut the properties and was not paid. So the underlining is I, I try to come with a solution instead of the problem. I know that if an application has been filed with the St. Louis County concerning the properties that you all own, that you all will reimburse Hillsdale for cutting their, your lots, <clears throat> your vacant properties, and board it up. <clears throat> but we need that initiation to be presented and to be uh, over, overlooked. If may. Um, also, there are some simple things as street signs not being uh, visible or not even being present at all. And I'm speaking of the uh, the ones at St. Louis Avenue and Oakdale, St. Louis Avenue and Dover, and St. Louis Avenue and Edmond. So those are little simple things, and I think. Once we can move forward with that and start trying to get that resolved, then maybe we can build a little bit better on getting the community to work a little bit harder within their own community. Thank you. Thanks. Next speaker is Ren Draper. My name is Ren Draper. I stay at 460 Chapel Ridge, Hazelwood 63042. I was here today um, just to, I guess, bring you up to speed on some things that we were trying to do to help the county save money. Um, last year, I was here in the summer when Councilman Wassinger, you were asking the transit system to find better ways to spend or to be better um, with the dollars that you guys give them. Uh, we, in fact, took from that meeting that as a charge to help the transit system to find ways to save money because I used to ride the transit system every day for work. Um, for the last year, we have met with their executives and the majority of the executives that we talked to were very excited about the different solutions that we brought to them. <laughs> From last year to this year, we offered them a way to save almost $10 million in operating costs and we offered them a way to increase their revenue by almost $2.5 million. Um, the particular gentleman, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus. I'm looking for a way to have you guys help us because some of the offerings that we made for them, we'd like to present to you all to stop situations like the gentleman from Parks and Recreation needing to have extra money for you guys to do other things with. I know Councilwoman Gray, you wanted to give raises to people last year. We have solutions to do that. Um, the particular gentleman with whom our project is on his or her desk told me to my face with witnesses that because we're offering so many ways to save money that the particular entities that fund the transit system, St. Clair County, St. Louis City, and you all, St. Louis County, um, if we start saving money in those increments, you guys would in fact cut their budgets. As a taxpayer, I'd like with you all, and I'm sure with the rest of the room, see them to do more with the dollars so they can provide more service to the residents. That's the reason that we presented the solution in the first place. I'm asking for a hearing to explain to you guys 
everything that we offer them and to make an offer to the county for some of the same services for the same dollar um, on a guaranteed contract um, that would put you all in a position to receive any type of refund at any point with which we would fail the county. Um, that is why I'm here. Uh, I can give this to you, Councilman Page. Sir. To the clerk. Oh, I'm so sorry. You know, letters in there from people in the county who know us, residents who will vouch for our character, ministers um, that know us, um, people that we've done business with, who we've saved money for. And I can further explain everything else to you all if we can have 30 minutes of your time to go through everything. Thank you. Thanks. Next speaker is Tom Sullivan. Mr. Chairman, I have a few things to mention. First, I think the council looked pretty silly withholding the funds from Metro. They're acting like a parent unable to control their child. I will say again, there is no other area where the council is more irresponsible than when it comes to the oversight of Metro. Last week, there was a discussion about increased opportunities by changing procurement requirements. Yet there is no concern for those unable to get the jobs because Metro is the fifth worst transit agency in the country when it comes to access for residents who don't own cars. Another area where I believe the council has been irresponsible is putting the zoo tax on the ballot. You didn't even do basic due diligence. This tax is now being promoted with a lot of money and a lot of dishonesty. It seems Jeffrey Bonner will say anything to pass it, and the media doesn't challenge him. Yesterday's story in the Post-Dispatch left out a lot of relevant information. Yet another way this council can be irresponsible is approve the plan to upgrade the convention center. More county tax dollars down a rat hole while so many needs in St. Louis County go unmet. This proposal needs to go to voters. When the dome was originally sold to county voters in 1990, it was said it would be a huge tax revenue generator. It would revitalize downtown St. Louis, provide thousands of new jobs, and generate many millions of dollars every year for local governments. Today, downtown St. Louis doesn't have a single department store. The shopping center down the street from the dome went broke, and the convention hotel across the street, which required tens of millions of dollars of subsidies, went belly up. <coughs> the bondholders that foreclosed on the hotel had a study done about the convention business in downtown St. Louis. It said downtown, quote, lacks the demand drivers needed to attract significant tourists and groups. It ranked St. Louis 23 of 25 cities in a measure of hotel revenue. These are things the CVC people don't tell you. <laughs> And today, the city of St. Louis, after being in the convention business for decades, is more broke than ever. The city can't even collect the trash. All the promises made for the dome and the convention business have been false. In 2004, St. Louis County voters passed Proposition A by an incredible margin, 72% in favor. This was a plurality of more than 200,000 votes. Proposition A was a charter amendment that requires voter approval of any funding for sports stadiums. Similarly, voters should have the say on whether funding for the Dome should go to upgrade the convention center. Let the voters decide was the argument for the zoo tax. It should also apply to funding for the upgrade of the convention center. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <coughs> final, final speaker this evening is Iva K. I'm an Afton resident, and I'm here to ask you to not rezone the area with Tower T, not Higgy. Uh, I don't want to see Tower T tore down and more houses built. I just live off of Higgy. And if they build those houses, they say the taxes may go up. I'm 87. <laughs> I can't pay no more taxes. Plus, I think McBride 
and Vera ought to be ashamed. Yogi Berra entertained us for years. And he was raised on Barra Hill. On the Italian Hill. And I'm sure he played ball in Barra Park. How many places is for the young to learn ball? and play miniature golf now. I want to save that. And I am also a cousin to Carmen Barra, Yogi's wife. He signed this for me at a family reunion. And Carmen took this picture of me and Yogi. And so they, when she died, they said how much of a lady she was and how much she did for the young. I have her death notice. And from Salem paper, where her parents lived, in this envelope. Uh, so Yogi worked with kids. Carmen worked with kids. Barra ought to be ashamed. <laughs> and I may go on the hill and tell the bears who I am and what relation I am, and tell them to honor Yogi by keeping it's three minutes a, a place for the young and the seniors to go play golf. I guess my time is up. But I, I just want to say there's so many gangs and kids that are delinquent. We want to keep some place where they can go and have a training and a life to be good citizens. As I'm sure you were, because you're working with the city and the state. I voted every election since I was 18 years old. And I hope I'm here to vote in the next one. But uh, Doug Beck. I am definitely voting for him. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you for your time. This is the first time I've ever been before anything like this. But I am a citizen of this state, and I am a taxpayer. And so I think that everyone should worry about the young and the seniors and everyone in between. And Yogi was a We were, Carmen and I were cousins on my mother's side and my father-in-law's side. Her mother was my father-in-law's sister and her father was my mother's cousin. So that Thank made you. me relation both, both of them.
No more speakers, Mr. Chair. Thank you. This concludes our public forum. Please proceed with introduction of bills. Bill number 250, introduced by Council Member Page, an ordinance accepting a grant of up to $333,370 from the State of Missouri Department of Economic Development, Division of Workforce Development, for a summer job leave program, depositing and appropriating said monies as set forth herein, and authorizing the county executive to execute necessary documents. Bill number 251, introduced by Council Member Page, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept a grant of up to $1,207,685 from the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services for a Women, Infants, and Children Supplemental Food Program, appropriating funds, providing for two additional program years, and authorizing the county executive to execute related documents. Bill number 252, introduced by Council Member Harder, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute a contract for lease of a 3.556 acre parcel of land at Spirit of St. Louis Airport with Truman Arnold Companies and authorizing termination of the lease for the same parcel authorized by ordinance number 19,951. Bill number 253 introduced by Councilmember Harder <coughs> an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute a fuel sales contract and up to three subsequent renewals with the West County EMS and Fire Protection District. Bill number 254, introduced by Council Member Trakis, an ordinance declaring the public necessity of and providing for the replacement of bridge number 400 and for widening and establishing a section of public road designated as Teshire Drive, directing the acquisition of real property therefore, and authorizing the county executive to execute contracts, agreements, and related documents. Bill number 255, introduced by Council Member Page, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute a contract with Veolia ES Technical Solutions, LLC, for facility management and hazardous material disposal compliance at St. Louis County Household Hazardous Waste Facilities. Bill number 256, introduced by Council Member Page, an ordinance amending Chapter 202, Title II, St. Louis County Revised Ordinance 1974, as amended personnel classified service by repealing and reenacting Section 202.366 pertaining to a new pay range structure. Bill number 257, introduced by Council Member Trakis, an ordinance establishing the Office of ADA Coordinator within the Department of Administration. Bill number 258, introduced by Council Member Walton Gray, an ordinance directing the Board of Police Commissioners to provide for the posting on an appropriate police department website of information per pertinent to the establishment of a civilian review board requiring same of St. Louis County. Bill number 259, introduced by Council Member Dolan, an ordinance Authorizing the Director of Revenue as trustee to grant a temporary <coughs> construction easement to the City of Webster Groves on, over, and under a portion of land acquired at the August 1973 tax sale for bridge replacement and improvements to Marshall Avenue. Bill number 260, introduced by Councilmember Page, an ordinance amending Title I, Chapter 109, St. Louis County Revised Ordinances 1974, as amended Department of Information Technology, by adding and enacting a new section pertaining to agreements with cellular providers for redirection of calls to the 311 call center. Bill number 261, introduced by Council Member Trakis, an ordinance amending the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance and the official zoning district maps by changing the boundaries of the R4 Residence District and the CA Plan Commercial District and approving the application of preliminary plans as amended. The development in the CA Plan Commercial District of attractive land subject to conditions PC21-18 JNR Meyer LLC. Mr. Chair, that is all the bills. Perfection. <laughs> Bill number 191, introduced by Council Member Walton Gray. Please hold. Bill number 191 is held. Bill number 202 introduced by Council Member Page. Moved hold. Bill number 202 and 202 is held. Substitute Bill number 1 for Bill number 208 introduced by Council Member Walton Gray. Please hold. Substitute Bill number 1 for Bill number 208 is held. Bill number 221 introduced by Council Member Page. Uh, moved hold. Bill 221. We are working on a substitute. Bill number 240 introduced by Council Member Irby. I move for perfection of Bill number 240. Second. All in favor of perfection of Bill number 240? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. Bill number 240 is perfected. Bill number 243 introduced by Council Member Page. Move to perfect Bill number 243. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Bill number 243 is perfected. Bill number 244 introduced by Council Member Page. Move to perfect Bill number 244. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 244 is perfected. Bill number 245 introduced by Council Member Page. Move to perfect Bill number 245. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 245 is perfected. Bill number 246 introduced by Council Member Page. Move to perfect Bill number 246. Second. All in favor? 
Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 246 is perfected. Bill number 247 introduced by Council Member Page. Move to perfect Bill number 247. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 247 is perfected. Bill number 248 introduced by Council Member Page. Move to perfect Bill number 248. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 248 is perfected. Bill number 249 introduced by Council Member Page. Mr. Chair, I may have a moment. Yes. Um, as the members of the council know, I had prepared a substitute bill for bill number 249 tonight. However, uh, I was informed after the bill was circulated that uh, the attached contract to original bill 249 was not, in fact, the contract that was uh, finalized. And so I only obtained that copy of that contract late in the day. So I would ask that the uh, chair hold this bill on the order of business so that I can... Uh, circulate that contract and, and submit a substitute bill next week. Okay, so you have, uh, this is the collective bargaining agreement for um, the um, forensic staff in the police department. That's correct. And you have the updated uh, collective bargaining agreement? Correct, and the, and the substitute bill simply removes any uh, vagueness with respect to um, what contract will be, uh, is attached to the, uh, to the legislation so that the council will know exactly the terms of the agreement that we're being asked to approve. Okay, so you could circulate that and then we could um, perfect this next week then? Yes. And keep everything on schedule? Okay. Everybody understand that? All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Moved to hold bill number 249 and 249 will be held. Final passage. Bill number 353 introduced by council on the page. Uh, moved to hold bill 253 and 253 is held. Bill number 237, introduced by Councilmember Page. Move for final passage of 237. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Aye. Councilmember Gray? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember Trakis? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chairman, Bill number 237, there are seven ayes. Bill number 237 is finally passed. Bill number 238, introduced by Councilmember Page. Move for final passage of Bill number 238. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Aye. Councilmember Gray? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember Trakis? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chairman, Bill number 238, there are seven ayes. Bill number 238 is finally passed. <clears throat> bill number 239 introduced by Councilmember Page. Mr. Chair, we have a substitute bill. Um, I don't think everyone's had a chance to look at the substitute, so um, this is an urgent. We'll hold it for another week and let everybody uh, read that. <clears throat> I'd be glad to answer the questions. So I'll move to hold up uh, bill number 239, and 239 will be held. Bill number 241, introduced by Councilmember Trakis. I move for final passage of bill 241, please. Second. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Aye. Councilmember Gray? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember Trakis? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chairman, bill number 241, there are seven ayes. Bill number 241 is uh, finally passed. Bill number 242, introduced by Councilmember Wassinger. I move for final passage of bill number 242. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Aye. Councilmember Gray? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember Trakis? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. The chair on bill number 242, there are seven ayes. Bill number 242 is final passage. <laughs> Moving on to resolutions, Mr. Chair, we have one this evening. Resolution number one, introduced by Councilmember Irby. I move for adoption of resolution number one. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Aye. Councilmember Gray? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember Trakis? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chair, on resolution number one, there are seven ayes. Resolution number one is adopted. Moving on to unfinished business, Mr. Chair. Item number one, third district. Hold on the order of business, please. So ordered. Item number two, seventh district. Um, please hold. So ordered. Item number three, second district. Two file and the extended hours be approved as requested. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. Item number four, third district. Receive file and the new liquor license be approved as requested. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have nothing under new business this evening, Mr. Chair. Okay. Any comments by any council members? Yes. Just want to remind everybody that the uh, 
the air show is this weekend at uh, Spirit Airport, yes. and uh, uh, it's also supporting STEM in our community, and all the money goes to STEM programs in the St. Louis City and County area. So uh, it's looking to be a, a great show. We don't have the the um, the uh, uh, Blue Angels, but there are a lot of other attractions this year. So okay. go. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes. Ye yesterday I attended the St. Louis County Transportation Commission meeting. Um, Metro was there and we had a nice discussion about their progress and coming up with proposals for um, the Securitas contract. They only extended it through the end of January, which I did not know. Um, so they're trying to think about different ways on how to handle security as well. In addition, they said the uh, production of the security study is is um, moving on as scheduled, and we should have it in early December. Okay, great. Any other comments? Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Adjourn. Thank you.